What is up, Chiefs Kingdom? Happy Wednesday. I'm Haley Lewis, and this is Chiefs News Daily. OTA is continuing over at the Chiefs practice facility while defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo racks up another award and the latest push to keep the Chiefs in Missouri. We break it all down. First, give us a like and subscribe right here on the KCSN YouTube channel, and let's get into it. All right, well, OTAs keep rolling today as the Chiefs practice Wednesday, and then they're going to conclude their third round of OTA practices tomorrow on Thursday. Now, Photos were posted online from yesterday's practice. They show Carson Wentz getting in some work. Lewis Reese Zaman also spotted alongside Patrick Mahomes. The birthday boy, Hollywood Brown, going deep, catching a bomb from none other than QB1. Mahomes even tweeting about the pass on Twitter, posting a retweet of the highlight, followed by the sunglasses smiley face. It's safe to say things look like they're going well between Mahomes and his newest target. Now, General Manager Brett Veach was also seen on the field. Head coach Andy Reid is expected to talk tomorrow along with a few players. The local media is going to look inside practice tomorrow, so expect a full update surrounding injuries then. As always, we're going to bring you those interviews from the pressers and any need-to-know information. Now, Phase 3 concludes on Thursday, and the Chiefs get ready for mandatory minicamp the following week. Minicamp is running June 11th through the 13th. Players are going to be available each day. Coach Reed and quarterback Patrick Mahomes are only going to be talking on Thursday, June 13th, the last day of camp. Now, this will wrap up the off-season program, which means training camp is next on the agenda. Camp's going to be held up in St. Joseph, Missouri, at Missouri Western State University, like it has been for the past couple of years. Well, Tuesday, the PFWA recognized Chiefs Defensive Coordinator Steve Spagnuolo with the Lifetime Achievement Award. The Pro Football Writers of America named the D.C. as their 25th assistant coach to win, their Paul Dr. Z. Zimmerman. This coming year is the 61st season for the Professional Football Writers of America. They've been sharing stories around the NFL since then. PFWA say they are the official voice of pro football writers, promoting and fighting for access to NFL personnel to best serve the public. The PFWA is made up of accredited writers who cover the NFL and the 32 teams daily. Now, Spags will share the honor with Tennessee Titans offensive line coach Bill Callahan. The PFWA shares that the Dr. Z Award is given for lifetime achievement as an assistant coach in the NFL. The award is named for Zimmerman, who covered the NFL for 29 years as a Sports Illustrated lead pro football writer. His impact on writing and football industries was profound. Zimmerman is widely considered one of the best football writers of all time, and his 1970 A Thinking Man's Guide to Pro Football and a revised 1984, the new thinking man guides to pro football are textbooks to this day for young football writers trying to learn the game and trying to learn how to write about the game. He started to cover the NFL in 1966, and he started at Sports Illustrated in 1979. Zimmerman stayed at SI until his writing career was cut short by a series of strokes in November of 2008. He served as PFWA's president during that time. Spagnolo just completed his fifth season as the Chiefs defensive coordinator and 24th in the NFL in 2023. He has coordinated four Super Bowl championship teams, and he is the only coordinator in NFL history to win a Super Bowl with two different franchises, the New York Giants in 2007 and Kansas City in 2019, 2022, and 2023. His 2023 defensive unit ranked second in both points and yards allowed and held San Francisco's offense down late in the Chiefs' overtime victory in Super Bowl 58. He was the defensive coordinator for the New York Giants from 2015 to 17 and the Giants' interim head coach for the final four weeks of the 2017 season. Spags began his NFL career in Philadelphia in 1999, followed by a stint with the Giants in 07 to 08, then the St. Louis Rams from 2009 to 2011, New Orleans in 2012, and the Baltimore Ravens in 2013 and 14 before returning to the Giants. Now, with four rings under his belt, Spags is on the hunt for another one as the Chiefs entered the 2024 season. The three-peat stays at the top of everyone's minds as week one inches closer each day. Well, Spags isn't the only one racking up honors this week. Two Chiefs guards land on the PFF's top 32 list. Pro Football Focus continues their ranking series heading into the 2024 season, with Joe Tooney landing at number two while Trey Smith finds himself at number 13. Here's what PFF had to say about Tooney. Tooney has cemented himself as one of the NFL's best guards, providing flawless protection for Patrick Mahomes over the past three seasons and earning himself first and second team All-Pro nods in the past two seasons. Tooney's 74.6 PFF overall grade in 2023 ranked ninth among guards, and his 83.4 pass blocking grade led the position. 
Tooney is an adequate run blocker, but he has made a name for himself in pass protection. He allowed just a 4.6 pressure rate in 2023, and his 88.8 pass blocking grade over the past two years is better than that of every other guard in the NFL. Now, PFF is ranking every position group based off their PFF grades in the 2023 season. When it comes to the O-line, PFF says, So often in football, the offensive line is the unsung hero quietly going about their business, protecting the quarterback, opening running lanes, and establishing the physicality of a brutal game. Offensive linemen only hear their names called in time of peril or mistake, but deserve to be lauded for everything that they do. So Trey Smith heads into his fourth season in the league with big approval landing on the list. PFF writes that Smith has the unenviable task of ensuring that the NFL's best quarterback stays upright, and he's earned a PFF overall grade of at least 71 in three straight seasons, now, while he's allowed more than 30 pressures in each season, only 15 were quarterback hits. Generally, Smith is as solid as they come. Now, availability has been a big green tick for Smith since he was drafted in 2021. He has missed just one game in three seasons, playing 3,319 snaps in that time. A true potential stalwart. Now, the O-line might have been the Chiefs' biggest weakness last season, but sure wasn't due to these guards. Drop below in the comments what you think about the full list. Well, this offseason has been filled with storylines for Kansas City. One that remains in the headlines is the potential move. Well, could Kansas City Chiefs stay or go? It's a question that many fans are pondering, as the team's lease in Missouri will run out by the end of January 2031. Now, you might be thinking, Mahomes will be 31 come that time. Why all the worry now? Well, it's because legislature moves very slow and the funds have to be in place come 2031. Raising $800 million, apparently, takes some time. According to KNBC, the efforts to bring the Kansas City Chiefs across state lines to Kansas took another turn on Tuesday. Launched by Scoop & Score Incorporated, a new website encouraging Kansans to support the Star Bond package to bring the Chiefs to the Sunflower State. This website also shares the new renderings of a Kansas-based Arrowhead Stadium that were produced by Manica Architecture. Now, mind you, these renderings did not come from the Chiefs. They are not produced by the organization. They are not associated with the team in any way. KNBC continues to share the website has a section dedicated to debunking myths and giving facts about the potential stadium move. They said, quote, A petition is also linked to the page encouraging residents to contact state legislators. Documents from the Kansas Secretary of State's office show Scoop and Score Incorporated was created on May 13, 2024. Records also show several lobbyists are involved with the group, including former Kansas Speaker of the House Ron Reichman, Kansas Senate President Ty Masterson, and Kansas House Speaker Dan Hawkins issued a joint statement concerning the Chiefs' possible move to Kansas. It said, quote, The rich tradition and history of the Chiefs are beloved across the entire Kansas City region and throughout Kansas. The potential to establish a home for the Chiefs family here on the Kansas side of the state line is an opportunity that deserves a thorough conversation. We have reached out to the Chiefs organization and asked them to weigh in on the possibility of using Kansas's unique star bond funding tool and explore what that collaboration could hold. KBC finishes the article detailing when the proposal will be brought up and a bill Kansas legislator continues to work on. They say, quote, one item expected to be discussed at a special session of the Kansas legislator is a star bond proposal to entice the Chiefs and or Kansas City Royals to move across state lines. After Jackson County voters rejected the extension of a stadium sales tax, moves at the Kansas State House were launched to put together a financial package to build the Chiefs' the new stadium in Kansas. Near the end of the regular session of the Kansas Legislature, the Kansas Conference Committee on Senate and House Commerce started working on the bill, but it was not approved. The special session begins on June 18th. All right, folks, that does it for another episode of Chiefs News Daily. Remember, join us on that LLC, our loyal listeners club, a great place to chat with myself and other listeners. Also, make sure you like and subscribe right here on the KCSN YouTube channel. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and we will see you back here tomorrow.